Hey everybody. Today we're talking about piecewise functions. Sometimes functions change their behavior suddenly, like the one I have drawn here, the heavy side function. This graph is modeling a switch that's thrown at time t equals zero. Before t equals zero, the switch is off, the function is equal to zero. At t equals zero, things change suddenly. The switch is on, and now the function is equal to one. A function defined by more than one equation over different domains is called a piecewise function. So, for example, we can write the heavy side function like this, with two different formulas on two different intervals. h of t is equal to zero if t is less than zero, and one if t is greater than or equal to zero. By the way, notice that those two intervals do not overlap, so every input has exactly one output. Here's an example. The function f of x is equal to 1 plus 1 half x if x is less than or equal to 0, and 1 minus 1 half x if x is greater than or equal to 2. To evaluate this function at any given value, we have to go through a two-step process. First of all, we look at the inequalities and decide which formula matters, and then secondly, we actually plug into the formula and get a number. Let's do a few examples. To do f of 4, we look at the inequalities, and we see that 4 is greater than or equal to 2, so we're in the second case. We plug in to 1 minus 1 half x and simplify to get that f of 4 is negative 1. Now let's do f of negative 1. We look at the inequalities, and we see that negative 1 is less than or equal to 0, so we're in that top branch. We plug in to 1 plus 1 half x and simplify to get that f of negative 1 is 1 half. Finally, let's consider f of 1. This time when we look at the inequalities on the, um, the right of the definition of this function, we see that none of them hold when x is 1. So f of 1 is not defined for this function. f of 1 does not exist, <laughs> dNe. To say that differently, 1 is not in the domain of this function. And if we look at the definition of the function a little more clearly, we can actually read off the entire domain. This function is defined when x is less than or equal to 0, or greater than or equal to 2. Here I've written that in interval notation. In particular, the function's not defined on the open interval 0, 2. We sketch piecewise functions one piece at a time. For instance, let's plot this um, same function that we've been working on. First, we draw the first branch, 1 plus 1 half x, stopping at x equals 0. In other words, we're just plotting that line to the left of x equals 0. Then, let's graph 1 minus 1 half x, but just the part of it with x greater than or equal to 2. So, this plot at the bottom is the whole graph of y equals f of x. Notice, by the way, that I've used solid dots at x equals 0 and x equals 2, to indicate that those points are included in the domain of the function. You've definitely encountered at least one piecewise function before, the absolute value function. But when we introduce it in elementary school, we don't usually write it in this way. The absolute value function has two different behaviors. If you plug in a positive number, x greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value function doesn't do anything. It just hands you back the same x value that you plugged in. On the other hand, if you plug in a negative x value, x less than 0, then the absolute value function is going to make it positive. To say that a little differently, it hands you back negative x, and that's going to be positive when x is negative. This definition for the absolute value function, in terms of a, a piece with a piecewise definition, becomes very useful in calculus. One final example. Let's sketch the graph of g of x equals negative 2x minus 3 if x is less than or equal to negative 1, 2x squared minus 1 if negative 1 is less than x is less than 1, and 2 minus x squared if x is greater than or equal to 1. So this time we have to graph three separate functions on three separate intervals. We start with x less than or equal to 1. To the left of negative 1, this is going to be the graph of a line with slope negative 2. I've put a solid dot at the point negative 1 comma negative 1 
to indicate that when x is negative 1, we are still on that line, y equals negative 2x minus 3. Between negative 1 and 1, we have the parabola y equals 2x squared minus 1. I will use an open dot, an open circle, at x equals plus and minus 1, because we are no longer on that parabola when x is plus and minus 1. In particular, you see that at x equals negative 1. At x equals positive 1, there's actually a solid dot, because that third branch of this function, y equals 2 minus x squared for x greater than or equal to 1, has the value of y equals 1 when x equals 1. So the two branches actually coincide at the value x equals 1. Overall, here's the full graph of y equals g of x.